I'm Gary Abbott. I farm in the West Arthur Shire with my wife Roz and son Tim, um, the northern side of the Lake Tauriny, which is a popular, popular spot in the district. The rainfall is uh, 500 millimetres. We've got 1,300 hectares and um, we run merino, 4,000 merino sheep and crops and barley and oats um, and there's about 150 hectares of saltbush planted. Uh, this land was uh, first cleared in the 50s, all the uh, lower lands, scapes, and uh, my father bought it in the, in the 60s and we started clearing the, the hillside in the 60s and 70s. The land originally was covered by red gums, white gums and jarra and jam wattle trees. In the, night, the early 1970s the lake behind me uh, used to have marron and uh, redfin perch and I don't know, 73 or 4 there was a major flood and that did well, they all saw them dying on the edge of the lake and uh, it really hasn't recovered since then. I remember it was surrounded by bulrushes and leeches and it all started to disappear when the levels got down and the salinity started taking over and uh, the place started, started to decline. With the salinity, we've uh, well spent a lot of money on drainage throughout the area, um, but we're finding it's well. There's a lot of upkeep on drains, and uh, there is a place for uh, deep-rooted perennials in our system to help help the drainage and lower the uh, water table. Our first introduction to the saltbush was in the early 1990s when we hired a contractor who had a, uh, a Kim disc seeder and we originally started off uh, seeding um, old man, quail bush, wavy leaf and uh, creeping salt bush and now we've gone into the Anamika salt bush. Well in this area there's, uh, there's puxy Puxy and tall wheat grass growing around, and there's a little bit of veldt grass. And uh, since we have um, direct seeded saltbush on it, it has improved by lowering the water table, and uh, it's quite good coverage of it now. This is an Acacia saligna. It was included in the Kim seed mix that we direct seeded in the 1990s. Um, parents would have died out, but this is seeded naturally uh, probably about three or four years ago. And as you can see, it's quite nice and healthy. The, the salt bush is a good hardy plant and it seems to uh, fix the situation, but we're finding that the much better variety of Anamika is a lot more palatable for the sheep and we're getting a lot more uh, productivity by moving into Anamika. This is a two year old Anamika plant. I was very impressed with the, uh, the growth rates of it and the sheep absolutely love it. They, every 10 or 12 weeks I run a mob of oh, 400 in here, about 15 hectare paddock and uh, for about three or four days and they really come out um, jumping out of their skins with the, uh, the vitamin E and the extra minerals they get into their body but you've got to be careful with it because it does they love it so much they can overgraze it so that's good management's the key with with this stuff. In between the rows when I was putting the Anamika in we uh, seeded tall wheatgrass and between them they 
do a very good job lowering the water table and good feed source. Um, also I did plant some uh, Messina clover. It hasn't done quite as well but there are some patches that are starting to, to regenerate so hopefully they'll keep going to put another nitrogen uh, component in the system. The advantage of the of the salt bush and tall wheat grass is that we do, at the times that we really do need our feed, we can run the sheep in, which is usually about the April period, and this and that really helps with the uh, lower the cost of the supplementary feeding. In 2006, we had a. Another site, the Ag Department wanted to experiment on mound, mound types for saltbush because it was a waterlogged site. So we had four types of mounds, um, one done with a grader, a plough and a disc plough. Oh, there was also just straight ripped. And out of those four techniques, the, the mounding was the most successful. I like this area, it uh, has a good uh, sp sporting community, um, reliable rainfall sometimes, <laughs> and um, supports um, 125 species of bird life, and uh, you can find many, many swans and ducks and, and spoonbills, and, and uh, I believe the bluebill duck is it's important sanctuary for it and probably the only place that you can um, find as many in this area. And um, I think it's in our interest to, to reduce salinity and lower the water table, less silting in, in the drainage areas. And it's important we preserve this area so it can carry on into the future.